Hi everyone, Mary Ann here. And most of you know, you've heard me uh, say over the last week that I'm going to do or had started a major reorganization of my studio. Um, I did it last year, but how I've had it set up just isn't working for me. So time to do it again. Got to move things around until I find the place, the system for each thing that is um, absolutely working for me and things aren't. So here's how it looks. Everything that was at this end of my studio is now moving to this end and everything that was at this end is moving to this end. And some of the things that were over here are moving over here and all the, and and what oh my desk which is right in the middle which comes here's a wall my desk comes out from the wall i was sitting on this side of the desk i am now sitting on this side of the desk looking that direction i have two windows right here and right here so my desk meets the wall in between the windows and i love that so whichever direction i i look and the door is at the end of my desk over here so either way the door stays in proximity to the desk the same, the windows are the same. But I've noticed that the lighting is different because the, there's two lights in the room, two uh, ceiling fixtures, fan with uh, fixtures, and there's one here and there's one here. But the one here was just a little bit closer to be looking over my shoulder on that desk then this one over here is a little bit farther back here not close enough to really give that light over my shoulder as I'm filming so I'm also rethinking lighting this week and um, I think I need to, to pick up a couple more uh, things I think I, I think it's time for a ring light and uh, maybe a couple umbrellas or I uh, need to kind of relook at what this is going to look like. But anyway, that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today because as I have been um, working on this complete reorganization and moving everything around and purging, I'm filling up a bag for um, Goodwill. Let somebody else have a fun find at Goodwill of uh, maybe some things that I've come to realize that I'm just not going to use. Um, I've also found things that I forgot that I had, which is awesome and amazing, fun things to use and some fun things for my sale because they're things that I purchased way more than I could ever use uh, because I thought that they were amazing and fun and um, so they're for the purpose of letting other people enjoy them as well. But one of the things that I have, start, have created now is this little pile of just things torn out of magazines and um, I needed to stop and do something with it because I'm running out of place to put it and I need to do something with it, move it on and I'm sure I'm going to find more as I complete this or I find a magazine. I'm actually taking time to stop, pull out uh, the things that I want from the magazine and um, then toss the magazine. Uh, if it's not something that I have a specific plan in mind for. Um, if you're just starting, you want to keep a magazine because there's so many things you can do with it. If you have, um, I'll just say it, a butt ton of stuff, a plethora of stuff is a little more refined, um, you really need to consider those magazines and, and see if they're really something that you need to keep. But one of the things that I love to tear out of magazines is things that I can use to make um, little stamps. Isn't that adorable? These are just faux stamps, cat crimes. Let me make sure I'm centered there. Um, cat crimes. That looks really cute. Here's a really pretty one. It's uh, steampunk with a, a butterfly and it says dream. Um, here's a fun one. That's a pretty large one. I might use that as a as a tuck spot or something. Here's a cute dog. Um, here's a really interesting um, collage. And so here's some actual stamp stamps. I do keep those as well. This one was just a really cool piece of, of paper, a piece of cardstock. And I know that I can, can stamp on top of it, create my own images if I want to keep the color there, or I could glue something on it. Uh, here's an actual stamp, Yugoslavia. So in this little drawer here, this side is actual stamps 
and this side is things that are not actual stamps. Well, these are, but they haven't been cut yet, so they're not over there. Um, isn't that cute with the hummingbird, black and white? Now, I might add a tiny bit of color into that. Might not. I don't know. Um, just uh, some of them are large. Some of them are small. Uh, I need to work on my camera, too. The positioning is going to be it seems like it's completely different because we're clear over here. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to do a couple of uh, trials and, and see where we're at there. But this is uh, this is the kind of thing that I like to create, these, these uh, faux stamps. They're just the right size to layer with, to um, embellish with, and um, to create uh, teeny tiny tuck spots um, or teeny tiny pockets. And September's all about in Happy Paper People is teeny tiny itty bitties. So if you're not familiar, Happy Paper People is a group on Facebook that uh, myself and my good friend and collaborator, artist uh, Sharon Shields run. And uh, we have some amazing people in this group. That's getting destroyed there. Um, amazing people in this group and um, it's just a load of fun. We believe in art of all genres and all sorts. We support artists of all sorts. And so we love having artists that do everything and anything in, um, in our group. Because truthfully, art crosses all lines. There isn't uh, here's a good example. Many who are watching are probably either scrapbookers or junk journalers or card makers. And sometimes people feel like if you're a card maker, you're a card maker and scrapbookers are over here and junk journalers are over here. But it's really not true because if you think about it, whoopsie, I'm trying to get a cord out of the way and I don't want to completely take you for a dizzy ride there, but let me get that out of the way. Um, if you think about it, think about maybe one of your favorite cards that you've made, and then think about how you could turn that into a scrapbook page layout, or think about how you could take a scrapbook page that you love and how you could turn that into a journal page. They're all, they all intermingle. They're all interwoven. Um, art is art, it, you know, it comes from the soul. It's what makes your heart happy, what makes your soul, soul sing. And you can do many, many things. Um, most artists are involved in m multiple forms of art. Uh, they just may emphasize one. So you may be a card maker who enjoys dabbling in mixed media and um, is gotten wind of junk journals and thinks, hey, maybe I'd like to put together a junk journal. So it's there's it's not ever one lane. It just isn't. So we like everybody in our group because we are inspired by everybody. Not just those are the same, but those that are different and bring different ideas that we hadn't thought of. This was a piece of cardstock um, and it was a 12 by 12 and I cut it um, around these stamps to make it small enough to put in here, but these are individual uh, stamps, some of them postmarked, and those are going to be perfect to cut out. And um, that made me just realize that I don't have my, my stamp uh, scissors. I believe they're close by, so let's, yep, I've got them right there, okay. Um, so the first drawer I showed you had things that had already been cut. Here's some actual postage that um, has come to me that I would like to keep. Here's some, oh, this is perfect for what we're doing today. So in here, these are things that I want to uh, use to make faux stamps or actual stamps, actual postage that I've received. And wouldn't these be really pretty? Pretty little faux stamps, these flowers here. Um, and so I put them in this drawer, and this drawer is now too full to add any more into it. Oh, look how cute that is. Um, so I thought, I mean, I just don't have room to add any more, and I've got these magazine pages that need to have something done. So I thought I would just sit down and do something with them quickly. I could use a break, and my hands are, are uh, dusty and dirty, and my... 
Um, neck is feeling hot and sweaty because long hair, you know, feels like having a horse mane around your, <laughs> down your head, down your back, um, or a wool scarf or something. So I thought I'll just sit down and, and rest for a minute and, and make some of these. And why don't I just flip on the camera so I can show you my process of how I do that. So um, most magazine pages are pretty thin. You can see the, um, I can tell that this is a Costco magazine that they send out every quarter because of that advertisement. Um, and this would be a book that they have in store. Uh, so, you know, pretty thin pages and that's not really gonna work as a uh, faux stamp. This one may, it's a little bit thicker. This was, looks like a trifold brochure that was is from a zoo. So it's a little bit thicker. So I may be able to just leave that as is. Um, this is pretty thick, so I'm not sure what this came out of. It's some kind of a magazine. Um, but I always like to look at these actual books, pictures of actual books, because those make great little stamps, uh, you know, faux stamps. So I want to just show you the process of what I do um, and how I turn them into faux stamps and what I do with them. And sometimes I do this up front. I like to have that whole pile uh, there that I can choose from as I need them. Uh, other times I like going to find the exact one that I need for a situation and um, you know choosing how I'll back it and I'll show you that in just a second. So first thing I'm going to do, well let me think here. Maybe I'm not. First thing I'm going to do is cut this off and I'm not going to cut this right up next to the picture. I'm going to leave some space there because if I'm going to cut around it with stamp scissors I need to make sure that I have enough room and there's just a barely a line between each of these so it depends if I cut it off then I have to cut it make it even shorter with the stamp scissors so maybe what I want to do is cut between them with the stamp scissors and actually give the stamp edge on both on both of them Okay, that one's perfect. This one I feel like could go in a little farther. Can't believe I'm holding this picture of a spider, my least favorite thing in the world. Okay, so I'm going to just cut that. And let's go down here. I'm gonna cut right inside that blue because I don't want that given a little bit of, you know, every other edge all the way down and that. So there, if somebody's doing a spider or an arachnid or a, you know, weird bugs um, journal, there is a, a spider faux stamp, and I can see that that's crooked. So I'm going to come back here, and I want to just straighten it out just a little bit. And I'll leave that because when it's used, it, I may uh, ink it and may decide what color to ink it at that point. Okay, so now let's look at this cute little cat and this bird. Now look how his beak goes right up to the edge. So I'd like to get as much of his beak in there as possible. That's about as good as we could do there. And we can do that. Let's go down between these two. Okay, now, this, see, the line is on this side, so I can actually go in a little bit closer. Sometimes it, I have to, or I feel like I want to, leave that line there because I'm getting just maximum amount of the picture. And then when I ink it, it covers up the line. Okay, so there's a nice tortoise. That's a really pretty bird. And if you truly want to make him faux stamps, so you want to take as little off there as possible to keep his head. That's a cool looking head. Right now they're just pictures with stamp um, edging done on them. So truly turning them into stamps, then I would give them um, some postmark stamps inked on top of them. I'd ink the edges, maybe, you know, uh, ink them up depending on what, where they're being used, you know, with color. Um, and 
put put some postmark on top of it depending on again what color but now something like this and that's a cute little owl he may just want to be um a corner tuck spot in which case i would say he's not strong enough and then i would want to back him and i'm going to show you how i back them in um, just a moment i'm going to leave that cat because if i wanted to in the future i could cut that off a little tighter on the oh, i just realized i'm completely out of the frame. See, repositioning. I had the camera just where it always needed to be on the other side. Now I move over here, got to reposition it. So I apologize if for the last few minutes I've been completely up here and you can't see. I will cut this bottom blue off, but I'm going to leave this depending how I decide to use him. I might take another cut in closer um, or I might just ink it uh, and cover up that little bit of a line there. Okay, so I want to throw away these little pieces here. Let me get those out of our way. All right, so looking at this little llama llama mess mess mess, it is definitely not um, strong enough, not thick enough to be, um, get that out of the way for a second, uh, used for anything. It does have a nice border on it. Um, and so I, a lot of times use these, um, these bookends, pages that I pull out of books that I'm not going to use for something else, uh, they're coming out of the book completely so but so like this is a nice thick one and this is a thinner one so it's a if it's a kind of sort of thick picture but not quite thick enough that one would be good on there just give it just a little bit this llama here is pretty thin so he'd be really good on on this one um, but then I have to look at, do I want it on something this color or do I want him on something of color? But he's got a lot of really good color on him. And so if I put him on this cream color, then uh, it won't distract. Okay, I don't want to glue right over these because I might actually hit a picture that I want. So let me just do this here. I could have looked exactly where I need the glue, but I'm just going to kind of put it down there and see if, and I'm going to cut some of this off, so I'm going to take him right up to the top because I know I'm going to cut some of that off. And did I get under the whole bottom edge? Not sure that I did, so let's do that. There we go. Now we'll leave this right here. Um, actually, it would be helpful if I had others to put on at the same time because they could all sit there and dry together. Um, so let's keep going through these pages and show you what I do with these. So here's a, a nice picture of Eiffel Tower. Here's a nice picture of the Grand Canyon. Let me see if there's something on the back side that I thought I might want to use. I don't think so. So um, let me do this. This is just a little bitty um, guillotine color, but it works perfectly for a lot of these little tidy images and doesn't take up a ton of space. Get those things out of the way. I think I'll move that too. Thought I might use it, but I think I'll just move it out of my way. Okay, so these are really pretty flimsy here. So I think that it would probably be beneficial to back these a little as well. See, this is large, so it maybe it's not something that I would use as a stamp per se, a faux stamp, but maybe more like a flip out or a tuck spot. So let me go ahead and get that on there and this I mean this is fairly large too so that would make a really nice tuck spot 
in a southwestern or the great uh, canyons of the U.S. or you know uh, um, some you know United States geography type journal. Somebody who's taking a trip and visiting all the cool canyons in the country. That would be a cool one to put in the book. Um, and if you are, if you're doing that or thinking of doing that, by the way, um, Utah has more of those cool canyons than any other state does. So definitely head to Utah to check them out. They are gorgeous and there's lots of things to do. Um, and if you're heading to Utah, let me know. Love to um, meet up um, with any of our subbies that uh, are traveling this way. That would be awesome fun. Love meeting, meeting people that we um, talk to but don't see in real life. Feels like there's a lot of glue there. So whoop, just pop that down, Marianne. That's okay. I'm trying to make sure that I get some of those. Um, sometimes after this is completely dry, I'll, see this paper is so thin, I'll just go back and press it and, uh, you know, to make sure it's totally flat. Of course, I mean, if I put this on as a tuck spot, it might end up with some other things on there too. So it might not even make a difference. So I'll wait and see how I decide to use it. Um, I could probably try to go a little less on the glue too. That's yeah, kind of hard, isn't it? You just slap down some glue. I'm using my little glue pot today. This is my little glue pot. It's just a little plastic container, and I've got three little triangle cosmetic sponges in the bottom. They help to keep the glue from drying out so quickly, and all it is is uh, tacky glue um, with a little bit of water. I don't, I really don't put a lot of water in, but just a little bit of water, just to thin it out enough that I can, you know, comfortably, um, brush it around and, um, you know, because it's pretty thick. Even, I mean, even a basic tacky glue is pretty darn thick. So and maybe if I'm getting too much glue, maybe I need more water in there. I don't know. Find out, just making sure those corners are actually down. Okay, all righty, let me move this over right here. Okay, we've still got room for a few more on that page. Let's see what we're going to come to here. Okay, here's a page out of a, um, out of a magazine that had a bunch of books on it, so I just um, pulled those out to Take a look and see if any of those were ones that I, I wanted to keep. And I think I think I like, I like this just because the really dark, it's kind of cool looking. Um, I'm gonna take this one too. I have got uh, a couple prayer journals in the back of my mind. People have asked for prayer journals recently, and there's a lot going on, and uh, prayer journals would be helpful. So that's an apostolic journey, something about religious studies. So I think maybe that would be a good one for a prayer journal. So this has a great big book called Muddy, um, Invisible Heroes. Oh, that's a really pretty picture. Uh, Daisies and Devotion, Born to World. Let me just get a couple of these. I go to the other side. I don't think there was anything on there. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Ooh, I almost went too far there because I want that born to world. Almost went too far. Let's just go all the way around that one right while we're here. These are super thin pieces of paper, so I'm gonna back those. And I think um, <clears throat> I think little books make really cute faux stamps, or sometimes I don't even, I'll back them, but then not trim them up with the stamp edge yet, because depending on how I'm going to use them, I might want them just to look like little books. And little books don't have stamp edges. But, uh, 
I leave enough space there that even after I back them, I can trim them down. And that way the backing is exactly as the uh, book. However, that being said, sometimes I will trim these up perfectly to the edge and then back it so that I can get this much of a border from the backing sticking out. So, and I'm looking at this one being this really dark, that's a picture of the um, Statue of Liberty on there. I really like that. Um, I think I might do that on this one. Get the glare off for me there. That's uh, kind of... It's really hard to trim super thin paper because it doesn't stay. It um, The slightest pressure, just even the cutter, the slightest pressure pushes the paper and makes it ripple up. So it's super hard to cut. So maybe it's easier with a, with just with scissors, but I really do like the clean cut I get on these things with a guillotine cutter, not scissors. And I feel like I'm much faster and I'm not going back and redoing so many edges when I use a cutter because I take me a second to get it lined up and then I can just slice through it. Nope. Okay. Um, that one I feel like needs to be backed on something darker because that's a very light colored book and that would look cool. So then if I use it as a faux stamp, then I just um, cut around the backing with the faux stamp or with the stamp edge scissors. Um, these, uh, th different brands make these. These are the Fiskars paper edgers. And um, if you keep an eye out, you can typically find these either at yard sales or uh, thrift stores. Um, they come in whole packs of, you know, I don't know, 30, 20, 30, 40 stick, uh, scissors of different kinds. And I've had a lot of them and I've ended up just giving them to people um, because they take up a lot of space for me and I've kept only the ones that I, that I really, really use. I mean, it's cool to look at a lot of them and say, wow, that's a really cool edge. But the truth is if I've had it for several years and I'm not going to use that edge, there's no reason for me to keep it. Somebody else might use it. Um, so I pass that on, but definitely the stamp one I use, um, that is one I use a lot. So the rest of them are not right here on my desk, but that one is in with my other scissors. So, okay, so this one's going to look cool with with uh, this backing around it. Um, that is going to need a darker backing. That actually will work really well in there. That needs a darker backing, and I think this one would work well, but I'm seeing a kind of a gray that needs to be a little tighter on this one. Otherwise, that gray line will jump out because of this light colored backing. So, there we go. All right, so I can pop those down. I think what I'm going to try to do, whoops, you know what? That was the same. It's got that same kind of gray edge on a couple sides. Hopefully you can see this, but it probably doesn't matter. I'm just cleaning up the edge. All right, I'm going to hold it on the bottom. I'm going to try to get a little bit of, oop, I'm losing a couple of synthetic hairs out of there. I always use a synthetic uh, brush when I'm using my glue pot because the glue if you don't get it washed out right away, it's easy to get out later. Um, on natural bristles, it pretty much just ruins them. So why don't you like to use natural bristle brushes on when I'm using my glue pot and tacky glue? Wow, look at that. Okay, just a cheap synthetic brush. And that's all, I mean, I knew it was, whoops. 
That's why I got it, because it was just a cheap synthetic brush. But let me pull out any that are super loose here. And hopefully, as I pull one, it won't just keep bringing more and more out next to it until I've eventually pulled out the whole brush. <laughs> okay, let's get another... And I'm doing this on the image this time because I don't want a bunch of glue around it because I'm going to, I don't even want it to dry around it because I want to be able to cut it with a border. And so I only want to glue the image down where here I just swiped it on because I know I'm going to cut it pretty tight or at least on the, the paper, the image somewhere itself. Um, but I want the backing paper to make the border on these so I don't want a bunch of glue outside of the image because that will show up even dry it'll be shiny or uh, yeah probably just shiny could be matte but still you can tell that there's glue there and I don't want that so okay I also don't want I want to have enough room where I can get a clean cut around it without having see how that glue is right there that's exactly what we'd have and what I don't want. And I just got some glue on top of her. Darn it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna save these two. They need to go on a darker, a darker backing. And I'm not <clears throat> sure if I have one right here or not. So, okay, let's see. What else have we got here? I need to get some of that into the trash. Okay, so here's some pictures. Uh, I had this on a, um, a smaller version. I know that I pulled that out of it. Now see, here's some on the, this is a really cool one. It's a map of the world. That would be cool to have. And this would be way cool to have, this steampunk. So I'm holding it up to the light and I know you can't see, but because, this they back they're like look how close they are i want to see where the top of this is and where the bottom of that is and by holding it up to the light because the paper's so thin i can see right through it and i can see that if i cut this one first thing i'm just going to cut down in the middle of this okay Keep going. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cut. So this is actually from a bookstore. It's a bookstore advertisement magazine. Um, because you can see it says save 10% on this one. And um, I'm gonna cut right across the bottom of that one. Okay, now I'm not worried about that save 10% because however I use this, if I'm layering it, um, I just will layer something right on there. It might just be a couple of uh, stamps. It might be a piece of metal or, you know, a, a word that goes along with um, this map of the world. Okay, so I also, I need to not cut it off here because I'll cut right into that. But what I need to do is separate this one and this one right down here. That's what I need to do. So I can see that if I cut at the top of the world back here, I will only lose that tiny, tiny little strip of square right there, which is only, you know, maybe a quarter of a square. So that is perfect. So I'm going to see if I can, I'm trying to maybe bend it just a little bit and line it up perfectly. Ooh, I actually went farther up than I thought. See, it took so very little off of that that it doesn't destroy that image. And it gives us this cool map. Let's see if we can get that little white strip off the top. This paper is so thin, this advertising magazine paper, so thin that it just doesn't, um, doesn't come up straight. So I will trim that up a bit. 
And maybe it doesn't matter because if I put it on backing paper that that's the that same color like that right there, maybe then it doesn't matter. And if I'm using that as a postage stamp, then I'm going to stamp, I'm going to cut around it with this anyway. So that will take that right off. Not sure if I am though, which is why I always like to um, prepare to be able to use it multiple ways. Okay, so now we can go around this one. So this one is the same. It's got an advertising bubble moving, going into the image right here. Let's see if I cut around the edge though. There's only that much of the, adver of the advertising bubble, not much. Um, and so again, when I'm using it on the page, I can put something right there. I can layer it or however we're gonna, gonna do that. So not sure what I'm gonna do with that one yet, but that's a great image. So I don't think there's anything on the back here. So let me take this. It's a big image and so it starts going crooked. So has anybody else reorganized their studio, their art room or craft room recently? Um, leave me a comment. Let me know. Let me know why you are. Um, are you bored with it? Is it not working like mine isn't? Um, or is there you know, other reasons that I hadn't even thought of? Um, but what is your reason for redoing it? And um, what have you learned as you're doing it? I like to learn from people. Like, what are your tips? What tips have you, uh, you, you know, learned something or you figured something out and so you decided to completely reorganize it to fit that? Um, share that with me. Would love to hear it. Would love to, uh, you know, get new ideas, new suggestions. Now this image down here on the bottom, this bright colored one that I'm cutting out, I, I really think that this would make a really pretty uh, faux postage stamp. And this one is just a really cool image of the child. Um, it appears to me like probably looking up um, into to the eyes of Christ. That appears to be Christ's arm around her. So that would be a really awesome image for a prayer journal. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm not going to do anything. This I obviously didn't see that when I ripped it out of the magazine because I probably would have gone in and cut it so I can could get all the way over to here and save more of the image. So I am not going to trim that up neatly yet until I decide exactly how to use it. I might want to leave it with a rough edge. So I'll, I'll leave that. But this, isn't this just a really pretty image for a faux postage stamp. Yeah, and it needs a backing because it's super thin, but it doesn't need a border, I don't think. So I'm gonna put it on, on a backing paper and um, they can also be used as tiny little journal cards. You know, if you're making a mini book, then you tuck this, tuck this in and it's a tiny little journal card. So if you back it with, I've got um, some coffee dyed paper, I've got, um, I showed you those pages that, that, that have come out of books and there's different colors and different thicknesses of those. I've got a few uh, colored, these are just copy paper that are, you know, there's a, um, a cream color, a green, that one's almost a gray and a lavender. Um, here is just a piece of uh, card stock that has some um, vintage writing on it, some coffee dyed paper, some that's more white, some that's more aged looking. So I can choose all kinds of things to uh, back them on. Let me move that over for a minute and we'll keep those, see if there was anything else on here. Oh, I like that word art, but it's cut off at the top of the... Hmm, okay, so well, I'll just have to look for art somewhere else. Okay, let's put both of these over here. So there's also some image. Oh, okay. So like these, I pulled these out and set them somewhere and I'm looking at that going, well, that's certainly not, probably not something that I wanted to make a faux postage stamp out of. However, 
I could totally see making a faux postage stamp right there out of that. That's a very, very cool image. But what I typically do with one like that, and this is a little bit um, thicker. Man, I've got glue all over me now. Try to get it off my fingernails at least, tips of my fingers so I can work with the next thing. Ah, uh, does that happen to you? Um, okay, what I typically do is take um, my punches and I get good punches out of color like this. So I need to get in way closer to this Mac here because I think, I think that would make a really cool butterfly. I've got this punch that cuts out the butterfly, but also cuts out, you know, all the sections. And then you can actually put it over the top of something else if you wanted to, or when you put it over a piece of paper, you can see through it. Um, so I have to have enough room around it to cut the whole butterfly and then cut the sections. And I often end up cutting off a corner of the wing because I forget to leave enough room. So I'm gonna try not to do that today. There's all the sections out of its wings. There's our butterfly. Oh, we could use that as a negative. There, isn't that cool? That is really a really, really cool image. And that just came out of this picture of a Mac. And so you can see if you put this over something white, how it would look. You could put it over something dark. You know, you can layer it all kinds of different ways, but yeah, get some really cool images like that just by looking for the color, um, not necessarily what the design is. So if this one, give me just a second here. This one is um, a label or a tag. I don't know for sure. But um, that's kind of cool. Put on a tag with maybe a brad on each end or a, um, a Nouveau Mousse drop or something like that. Uh, something could go on top of it. And so if it was really dark, then you could put something white on it, you know, to, to label or a word, a white word of inspiration. Look at that. And so it's dark, but it's not the same color all the way. You know, it... it um, kind of uh, morphs into different colors. And I love that. So let me see how many of these I can get out of here. That's, that's really cool. See something like that? I might not even put a word on it or something. It just looks cool by itself. Okay, and this one's gonna be mostly dark all the way. So I think I've made full use of that um, picture of a Mac. So you thought you didn't like Macs? Look at that. Okay, so here's an article out of the same magazine. This magazine came from a university um, because it's talking about an alumnus that they're um, honoring. So I don't care where it is or I don't know him, so I don't necessarily want to keep him. But I looked at this green screen behind him and thought that's a really, really pretty green. Look at that. That's a really pretty green, and it uh, is, has kind of the ombre effect. So I'm thinking that there's probably a lot of things that I can get out of that out of that green. So let me first go over here and see what I can get by way of butterfly. I see some little parts and pieces in there from the last one. Looks to me like I might have cut off the edge of his wing, which means, and I don't, you know, if I have great color and I get this butterfly, I don't want to, uh, sitting right there, I don't want to lose the butterfly, so then I have a stack of these that I have to use to layer with something. Um, uh, let's see. It's just sitting here right on the edge, and there's some little parts and pieces 
from the the cutouts that are keeping it caught. Oh, look, his little antenna got bent, and that was what was keeping him caught in there. Okay, so there he is, green. He's got just a tiny bit of orange on that tip. It's really not orange. I think that's his face. And I cut off that one. So I could put him somewhere and then put something right up here, um, you know, to use him to layer. But so I haven't quite got all that figured out because I don't, it's not just the image that I see right here, but it has to be out farther because this is the center it's cutting out. And then the exterior of it is out here somewhere. And I guess I haven't exactly figured out or figured out exactly where that edge is or needs to be because I often end up cutting off like that. So let's try it again. Let's see if I can get most of those out. Man, they can come out easier. Well, I got both his wings in, that's for sure. Oh, look, there's the other side. Didn't even think about the other side being... Oh, that one didn't uh, completely cut. Let me get a tiny bit of scissor. I did see some bits and pieces in there from the last one, and I should have made sure they were completely cleaned out because if that was in the way and didn't let the blade come down on top of that one, it's like right there, and it totally chunked out a piece. Oh, that's okay. Good places to put jewels and things. So look at the other side. So here's the thing. You might look at this side and think, wow, you know, there's really nothing there. But if all you're getting is the outside image of a butterfly, um, you know, it's the colors. It's not what the image is on the piece of paper because you're never going to see the image on there. All you're seeing is the colors. So I think either side of that can be used, which tells me that this green and yellow and, and light green right here might be really cool. This red and white and pink, bright pink here might be really cool. Um, I feel like we've got some more green and black here that would be cool. Maybe even down here. Um, and I do, well, you know what? I'm gonna come up here and see what we can get in this red and pink. Um, that would make a cool ombre butterfly, wouldn't it? So I'm gonna start over here. I feel like one of them didn't go through and I forgot to clean it out again. Little bits and sitting in there from the last time, they're gonna keep it from cutting cleanly. Okay. what I get being in a hurry and not stopping to make sure it was all cleaned out and then all it does is take longer so what is that saying haste makes waste <laughs> hurrying makes slower I feel his antenna I think or something is hung uh, yep okay so there was something in there and it just kept that one from it's the same one as last time so there was the same little piece caught in there and kept that one from cutting cleanly and so the piece that didn't cut off got hung up. There's one right there too. Still usable, no worries. Look at that, we got a um, little bit of green up there. Oh, look at the other side. <gasps> That's even better. Look at that, that is a really cool color. Really cool color. Okay, yeah, sometimes you just take things and start cutting when it's something like that because you don't actually know what you're going to end up with. Let me see if I can make sure that all the bits and pieces are out of it this time. I think so. I think so. All right, so I want to get down to this pink and red. Ooh, but the other side's going to make cool. Wow, okay. Look how cool the skin tone turns out with bright colors. That makes for really cool contrast. 
Now the beauty about that is that I have two completely different colors on each side of this butterfly. So depending what I want to use it for, I can just choose which side I'm going to use. Man, I did not clean that out very well, I guess, because I can see. I'm just going to pull all these right here before I release it. I'm still holding it down. Okay, let's see if that helped. There we go. The same one. I got to look at which one that is and why that keeps hanging up. That's never happened before. There must be something stuck in there that I'm not seeing very well. Okay, so there's the red and pink and white. Same thing over there too. All right, maybe there's something stuck on it. Maybe I need to get in there with some tweezers. And dark green on the other side. So I've got pink and white and red and then dark green, light green, kind of forest colors there. So, oh, there's a, I can see something stuck right there. All right, I'll deal with that later. That's going to need to be cleaned. So that can't keep happening every time. Okay. All right. So if I've got some, um, you know, like good solid color, like right here, and I think maybe I can get a, you know, a good solid butterfly out, I'll take this and stick it in there. Yeah, there. There we go. There's a nice ombre green. Is there any place else? So if I do that, I'm actually going to see those letters. This is going to give me um, something silver right through the butterfly. So is that a cool division or not? I don't know. We'll find out. It might be a cool division of the wing pieces. Um, okay, I think I'm going to let the rest of that go. <clears throat> So that's what I do with those. So I try to get the most use I can out of it. A lot of times I'll pull out a I'll pull out a page out of a magazine just because I love the color. Like this. Here's a perfect example. Love the color. Love the color of all this down here. So I'm gonna put this onto a backing page. To make it thicker because it's super thin uh, magazine and if I put it on a backing page then I'll be able to cut it a little easier and you know the back will just be like this but that's okay um, so that'll work perfectly let me do that real quickly it can be drying there's a few others different types of things that I kind of wanted to get to to show you what I do with those Oh, I do think this maybe my glue needs to be thinned out just a little bit because it just seems a little thick on this super thin magazine paper. I'm going to put that down. It is super thick. Or super, super thin magazine paper, not super thick. It is super thin. And yeah, see all the, the wrinkles and crinkles? And I really don't want that. Can't pull it up for very long. Um, but that's the beauty of tacky glue. At least you get a at least you get a minute. At least you get a minute to do that. That's about all you get, but and I can press it later. If you end up with a big old bubble, you know, in an image like that that you put down and you don't like it and it's dry, um, you can try pressing it, but if it's still there, there is a little trick. And the trick is to take a needle and just stab a tiny hole in the center of that bubble and then just press it with your finger all the way around because it will push all the air of that bubble right out that tiny little pinhole that nobody can see because it's just literally a tiny little pinhole and uh, it's flat. There you go. Trick. Pro, tri pro tip. Trick of the trade. I like those little tips. I can't even tell. I can't even remember where I ever learned that one. Um, sometimes things come out of desperation. You're like, I gotta get that down. How do I get that down? Stab it. So 
Sometimes you figure things out on your own when you're just trying to make it work. When you do, share them. Share them. Oh, I love sharing all the tips that I've learned from other people that I, maybe I just stumbled upon. However, doesn't matter. I'm always happy to share them and I love sharing them because I like other people to feel the joy that I felt in learning something new like that. And I love learning new tips from others. So, okay, so here's a good page. Um, oh, and here's a whole bunch of just little flowers and things. So these would be really great in a garden or a floral um, journal. They are thin. There's a couple little books there that would be cute. They are thin and so they do need some backing. This is gorgeous up here. And I love these. And the part of the reason I like these is because it's got all the information right below it. The basil, uh, penstemon, the aster, the lupine, and the milkweed. So I definitely want to be able, I want to cut this in half up here because I want to be able to use this whole thing so I don't think if, if it didn't have this information it was only the pictures I would cut around each picture and I would probably definitely use those as postage stamps faux stamps which is what I'll do with these little guys here but because it's got all of that I think that these would make adorable um, mini journal cards in a just a mini album a mini um, or you know just little little cards backed cards so you could write on them you could make notes about that particular plant if, if you were using it you know for that purpose um, they could even be put down as tuck spots tuck spots or uh, I'm going to leave that. I might want that extra space to make that a little flip out or a tuck spot. If I want to put it on with um, washi, that gives me a good border to use washi and not go into the words or the image. So I'll trim these up a little bit, get that other stuff off the top, but but I'm not going to trim them too tight because as I go to use them and, you know, decide how I'm going to use them, then I'll have a little bit of um, working room if I want that extra space. So those will make really cool tuck spots or uh, cards. If I back them, maybe coffee dyed paper, and then they could be um, used as a uh, even a bookmark. That would make a cute bookmark, and you could write on the back journal on the back. Okay, so this needs to be, um, definitely needs to be backed because they're cutting them with plenty of room. They definitely need to be backed um, because like these, they're super thin and I think we're probably getting up there close to an hour. I don't want to go over an hour in time. So, um, and I don't know that I want to cut these out with the postage, with the, yeah, the stamp edge, but I really want to show you how, how I do that. So let's say, okay, here's a good one. This is some, just some pretty little daisies. I'm not even getting in too close because I want to leave some room on there. But I think that this would be better suited on maybe that color paper even though it's just going to be the back let's just do that real quick it should dry quickly oh my goodness these cheap brushes look at that there's another one coming out uh it's funny i yeah i found i got these a long time ago and i found it as i was reorganizing the room I uh, found the set and I actually took them out of their container that they came in, stuck them right here. And I thought, oh, I want to use those. I love rose gold and I want to use those. So um, <laughs> stuck them in the container and thought I always need the uh, synthetic brushes for glue. So I'm going to put them there and that's what I'm going to do with it. Well, look at that. It may not last very long. All right. This is not dry, but 
Let's do this. I'm leaving enough room around it that I can ink it because being so light, so white, I think that the ink would help give it some good definition, and which is why I'm not really worried about that tiny bit of writing, even this over here, that a little bit will stay because once I ink it, I really like to wait until it's dry to do that, but I wanna show you. As I ink it, it's just gonna cover up that tiny little bit of line or tiny little bit of writing. Yeah, it's just bending, it's all wet with the glue. And if I don't like this little bit of word right there, when I go to use it, I can um, layer over that. And actually, if I'm using this as a faux postage stamp, which I am now doing, okay, when I put that down, I'm going to stamp um, a postmark on it um, with the lines and, you know, a city and, and that. So that will stamp right over that and you won't see those words or a couple of little letters there because the, the um, postmark will go right over the top of that. So so that's just a you know an hour craft with me uh, kind of showing you my process for um, making the faux postage stamps, how I like to back them, um, how I choose whether um, I'm going to postage stamp them. Uh, you'll see these, I, I think, I feel like they want a border around them, but if I cut them with a border around them and just keep it like that, if I decide when I go to use it that I really want it to be a postage stamp, I don't want to cut into that one. If I decide when I go to use it that I really want it to be a postage stamp, I can just take my postage stamp scissors, wherever I just set them, and go right along. <clears throat> Actually, here's what I'll do. This is what I this is what I typically do on something like that. I want to leave the border. Go right down the middle of those two. Hopefully I lined them up straight. I want to leave that border because I feel like it needs that border as a frame. That's a little close to the edge, but I'll do just, there we go, just like that. Um, actually went off just a little bit there, line those back up, get a little bit closer in there, okay? So now I've got that book as a faux poster stamp. Doesn't that look like a real one? And if I ink up the edges a little bit, and sometimes I'll wait and decide what color to ink the edges based on where and how I'm using it. There we go. So that's a faux postage stamp. Now I, I will give it um, postmark, you know, canceled postage. But I really feel like these dark images, they end up looking really cool, especially the real books. Um, but they need this kind of light border and postage stamps are like that all the time but they need that light border. Um, to frame them. Yeah. Now where's our where's our little girl there? Cut her out and then we'll call this a video. Call it a craft with me. making some teeny tiny, I don't think we had any itty bitties, but these are all teeny tiny uh, faux postage. So we'll call it an all about. We'll call it a craft with me all about, or an all about craft with me for September, uh, making teeny tiny, making teeny tinies, which are faux postage. So didn't she turn out nice? And we can give her some canceled postage as well. And um, we've got the, the daisies there and those dark ones. So I'll probably go ahead and give them some canceled postage and take a picture of those to put it as the thumbnail on here. And so you'll see those at the beginning. And here we are with these ready to go. Um, you know, sometimes I will, I'll leave that word on it. It says the Grand Canyon. Sometimes I'll postage stamp edge these two, even if I'm going to use it as a tuck spot. It does look pretty cool. Um, and I notice that I'm going all the way to the outer edge of the image and so it's actually leaving a tiny little white border in the postage stamp 
And I'm doing that because as I ink the edge, which I know I will do on that, um, that inking will color those white, that white edge. Um, so I'm not worried about that, but I did want to get